Hi, welcome back. In this clip, we will look at the different types of data that we can enter. So we're going to enter a slightly more complex data set. And we also look at some of Excel's copying and filling options that can save you a lot of time as you enter data. Now, if you work primarily with corpus data, the data entering bit may not be as relevant in the beginning, especially if you import data from external sources, but you will be using that information um, for adding more data, more variables, more columns. And it's also relevant, of course, for people who would want to start from scratch and enter some data on a study that they performed. Okay, so let's assume we have a number of participants that we tested on a particular um, phenomenon and in a particular experiment. And we can enter the data as follows. As a principle, we will use the columns that we looked at in the last clip as the place where we store the variables. And we use the rows as the place where we store the values of that particular variable. So the first row is usually um, the variable name or the column header. So suppose we had information on our participants such as name, we would enter their names, i.e. the values of that particular variable in the rows from two onwards and down. So we had six participants, right? So we could just enter uh, the information here. So that would be our um, variable name. And uh, we would also have a variable called age. Notice at this point that the values here are left aligned and the values here are right aligned. Um, that's because this is a nominal variable, right? It's all characters. So the values of that variable are all uh, uh, characters and the values of the age variable are all numbers. So it's a numerical variable. So that's why this is uh, right aligned. So Excel recognizes that for us, which is um, quite neat actually. So then we have a score on the test in which we tested these people. And here we can enter decimals if we have to, for instance. Now, if I enter a zero, that will disappear. Excel will just uh, round this one. Okay, it's a numerical variable. Again, it's uh, right aligned. And suppose we, oh, no, I should mention at this point that the number or the, the character that you use as a decimal separator, that will depend on your system's language. So if you have a system that speaks English, uh, the point will usually be just fine. But if you work on a system that is German speaking, um, you should use the comma. So play around with that a little on what your system recognizes um, as the decimal separator. A very good indication is um, if your system doesn't recognize that particular character that you use, uh, then the value should be um, uh, left aligned because Excel recognizes that as a character variable. So just to check perhaps if we entered seven comma four, which is the decimal separator on most German speaking systems. Um, Excel indeed recognizes this as a character and would then um, uh, left align it. So that's a relatively good indication to find out what your system uses um, as a decimal separator. So use the one that your system recognizes as um, a number. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons that my system speaks English because that makes things a lot easier, especially in um, exporting uh, the data later on to some of the statistical programming languages. So that's uh, here for you to try out. And suppose we had the variable uh, gender. Um, for, this, for the sake of the argument, we spell these out. You could use F or M um, as well. Now, if I go to the third person, Charlie, which is a person, well, or Charlie, for the sake of the argument, assume that uh, he's male. If I enter M, 
Excel will already try to guess what I'm trying to answer based on the values that I've previously entered. And I can make use of that um, to make it a bit quicker. So I can just enter the letter M and then hit enter and Excel will fill it out for me automatically. Similarly for Deb, if we assume that um, Deb is female, I enter F and Excel guesses, I can enter that value, similar for Liza and then Fred um, as well. So that's the first part where Excel can speed up things for you by simply guessing of what we're trying to do. Another area where this is um, quite helpful is suppose we had a value called um, group and we assume that all these people came from a group that was the squirrels. Now I could enter the squirrels into each of these cells similarly by just entering S and then just hitting enter. But the longer my list is, obviously this takes um, more time, but I can use here one of, oh, I'm illustrating the use of the copying function. So if I'm in this cell up here, and I want to copy this value into all of the other cells, I can hover over that little green square until a black cross appears, click and hold, and then drag it down. So all the following rows that I want to have this value, um, I can select and then release once I'm done. And Excel will then copy that value for me all the way down. Now for many purposes, um, you can do another thing that we'll look at in a second as well. Um, and I illustrate that by maybe using um, another variable that I may want to call ID. So suppose I want to give all my participants a unique identification number so I can store their data separately from their names. Uh, I can enter a one, two, three, four, five, and six, obviously. And again, the longer the list is, the more time this will take me. And it's also prone um, to errors, obviously. So I can uh, just delete uh, that. And what I can use now is, well, part, partly I could use the copying function, right? So I could, um, again, hover over that until a black cross appears, click, hold, and then drag down. But now it will just do the same thing that it did with the squirrels before where I um, just dragged it down. But what I wanna do is not copy the value, but fill a series. So notice that once I did the drag and fill, this little symbol popped up. That's a clickable context menu, as you call it, the autofill options. And it copied the cells, but that's not what I want. I want to fill the series. So I can now just switch to fill the series and it will then give me the numbers from one to six. So notice I did that by uh, dragging, but I could also do that by double clicking. So if I'm in that cell, hover over until the black cross appears and then double click, it will fill the rest of the table that I'm currently in. And again, I don't want to um, copy the cells, but I want to fill the series. Uh, so I can do that. Um, the, the same principle with the double clicking actually works with the squirrels um, as well. If I click on that, hover over, here's the black cross, double click, and which we'll is copy um, the information for me. Now there's one special class of things Excel tries to be smart sometimes, and usually it's quite good at that, but it's also quite funny. So if you ever come across something um, weird in your data, it may be uh, because of the following. So suppose I tested these people on a specific day. So I wanna record some information on the day that I tested them. And I said, well, okay, I tested them all on a Monday. Click on that, hover over, double click, Excel tries to guess that there is a series. Now this may be what I want, right? So I may have tested a Gatha on a Monday and Bert on a Tuesday and Charlie on a Wednesday, but more likely maybe I wanna just say like, I'll test all of them on a Monday. Then I could just say, okay, right now, I don't want you to fill the series, but I want you to copy um, the cells. So that would just revert the uh, erroneous um, entry that was made. One thing perhaps at this 
juncture also is that you can resize the columns if you wanted to. So if you hover between two columns and the border, um, that little symbol will pop up with pointing arrows in both directions. If you click and hold and then drag, you can uh, resize the name or resize the width of your column if you want to. We'll come back to these little things as we go along as well. Okay, so I think the last thing that we may want to do for today, obviously, um, is to save our data, uh, which is always good practice probably to save your data regularly while you're doing it. Uh, so for this purpose, I'm just uh, saying like, okay, yeah, I want to uh, save the file as test scores. All right, that's it. Yep, generally I'd advise you to save as soon as you open a document and then save regularly in between or maybe find out what this auto save function uh, does for you. I mean, for me, it's a new version actually. I've just updated to the latest version of um, Microsoft Office. So uh, that's a new for me as well. Anyways, that's me for today and I see you next time. Thanks.